name is Karen Singh, commercial lead at Xander. Uh, and this is Harvin Gupta, director of solutions engineering at Xander. And what we are going to be talking about today is essentially pressing the programmatic reset button for 2022. So an obvious place to start is obviously a quote from Marilyn Monroe, which makes perfect sense in the world, world of ad tech. And it's all about how sometimes good things can fall apart so that better things can be joined up and, and essentially fall together. So a bit left field, I know, but stick, stick with me on this one. It's potentially a bit dramatic to suggest that as an industry, everything is falling apart. But I think we'll all agree that we, we're very much in the headwinds with all the challenges that we've got coming up in the next year, two years, and, and what we're facing really today. We can see it in the headlines, whether it's stuff around antitrust, monopolistic practice, regulation, or the future of identity. And what's, what's clear and understandable is that as an industry with so much money coming through it now and so much growth that we've seen, we often look for what is the quick fix? What is the easiest solution for right now for us to, to kind of get over these, these particular hurdles? So what we want to kind of do today is, is kind of take a step back, take a breath, and really look at hitting this reset button and looking at ways in which marketplaces as a concept can help us drive long-term solutions to some of the challenges that we face as an industry today. So we'll, we'll highlight what those challenges are and what the core components look like, and then Harvin will walk through how marketplaces at Concept can, can actually help solve for that. So in order to do that, what we needed to do first was really distill down what the core components were, or the kind of key programmatic buying checklist, if you like. So really going back to basics here. And what we came with was the four core components being around reach, control, choice, and privacy. And these are the element, elements that will, one, highlight the challenges of, but also work around how marketplaces solve for, for these. The first thing is the perennial marketing challenge, right? Marketers are competing for consumer attention. That has become more and more difficult. And we know in the EU alone that there's something like, on average, 8.2 devices per capita. So there's no mean feat to kind of stitch that all together. One of the things that I've been asked in my role this last year has been a lot more around how can brands and advertisers achieve this, but also reach much more inclusive audiences? How do they expand that reach out? How do they support things like minority-owned media? How do we make sure that the way in which we advertise is reflective of who we want to target, which consumers we want to engage with? And that's not something we've necessarily looked at from a tech perspective in terms of solving for. When we've had those conversations and we actually look at how we can you know, turn it from talking about it into action, it's not something we've achieved to date. And actually, it's one area where we believe that marketplaces can really help dip our toe in the water and help our advertisers gain that reach that they're looking for. We know that certain channel, channels like CTV, for example, become more inclusive just by the very nature of the, the mechanic. But we can be doing more in this space, and we'll, we'll uncover what that could potentially look like. The second one within our industry is all around control, or more likely a lack of control. We seem to be, be happy within our industry to hold our programmatic buying to the same account that we might buy an everyday item, right? So if I need to go buy a new pair of trainers, I go to the shop, I'm happy to hand over the money for the trainers, so 100 quid for a pair of trainers, for example get that product back, and I don't ask questions about how much it costs to make those trainers or what the retailer markup is. But with the billions of pounds and, and dollars that we have coming through our industry, I don't think that's good enough. I think we need to hold our industry to a higher account, figure out what's in our supply chain. We know that there's unknown deltas, et cetera, have a well-lit marketplace so we can understand and take more control in terms of who's adding value, what's not adding value, so we can put those parts of the jigsaw together and create a bespoke solution for, for us as, as advertisers. Because what that control gives you is essentially choice, right? And again, within our industry, there's, if you look at something like the Loom Escape within our industry, you'll see a hundred of hundreds of tech partners that you can potentially work with. But when you look at the proportion of spend and how that is actually cut, it's clear that it's not going to those, it's going to one or two, two players within the, within the market. And for me, this kind of lack, of lack of choice makes it really hard for 
advertisers to differentiate themselves, right? So our advertisers are operating in a hugely competitive market, right? And using the same data set to get the same media assets is not really going to help create competitive advantage in the same way as if you're able to kind of look at who's in, in the picture and, and pick and choose what works for you as an individual business and help you to di differentiate that way. So it's, again, something that we need to explore in, in, in greater detail, and it's something that we're going to look at how marketplaces can help us solve for, too. And that element of choice also goes into the way we tackle what is potentially the industry's biggest challenge today, which is around privacy and the future of identity. What's clear to me is that from an advertiser perspective, again, from conversations we've had, is that there is a perception that the solution to this is something that potentially looks, walks, talks, smells very much like a third-party cookie. And that could evolve to, to kind of be the, the solution that we, that we go with, but what we're getting as an industry is very much a single point of failure by putting all our eggs into this basket. What advertisers need is the choice to be able to determine what is the best strategy to tackle what is the industry's biggest challenge, whether that's leveraging enhanced contextual solutions, looking at first-party data solutions, whether it is ID solutions. We need to have a diversified approach to that. And again, it's one of the ways in which marketplaces can help us solve for this. So before I, I pass over to Harvin, going back to the quote from, from Marilyn, we need to look at ways in which we can join things back up together in a more long-term long -term and sustainable way, a way in which creates a better balance between our interests as advertisers, but also the interests of consumers, who are the people we're trying to engage and build long-term sustainable relationships with. And again, the way in which we think that this could happen is via this concept of marketplaces and joining things up in that way. So with that, I'm going to pass over to Harvin to run through that concept. Thank you. Hello, my name's Harvin, and I head up Solutions Engineering at Sander. And the big idea that I want to be talking to you about today is how we can take the concept of marketplaces and use that to solve some of the challenges that Corin was speaking through. So before I do that, I want to start with a definition. So what do I mean when I talk about marketplaces? Because I don't want this to be complicated. So in this, in this world that we live in, we've got buyers, and they're using a DSP, and their job is to you know, maximize return on investment, to create impact, and to buy advertising at the right place at the right price. And then we've got sellers, and the sellers are using an SSP, and their job is to maximize yield in a brand safe way. But then we've got the environment where these two come together, and that's what I mean about the marketplace. It's where the transaction happens, it's where the trade takes place. And not all marketplaces are the same. And we know this in our everyday lives because we all use different types of marketplaces. So when I was thinking this through, what I was thinking was, okay, if I've just been paid and I'm feeling a bit flush, I'm probably going to go to Waitrose and get myself some nice expensive food. But if it's coming towards the end of the month and I'm kind of going into the red, well, it's off to Lidl. Other examples are, I've recently joined a sort of fancy wine club where um, someone, like a wine snob, basically curates the, the wines that I buy, but I pay a subscription fee for that. The point is, in our everyday lives, we're very used to changing up the marketplaces that we buy from based on the problems that we're trying to solve for. And the big idea here today is that we can actually do that in programmatic as well. And if you can't find a marketplace that's fine-tuned to solve the exact problems that you have, well, then you can build your own. So let's try and map that to some of the challenges that Curran was talking about. The first thing he spoke about was reach. And we said one of the challenges is, well, we've got lots and lots of environments. We've got lots and lots of formats. And actually, what we're trying to do as well is to find these diverse audiences we want to have inclusive ad campaigns where we're trying to find almost niche audiences that match the communities that we live in. And that can be hard to do. But what we need is better signposts. We need a marketplace that's well signposted so that whatever type of inventory you're after, you know exactly where to find it. Rather than a big, sprawling marketplace 
where you can't really find what you're looking for and you have to be an expert buyer to know where to look. Instead, we need really clear signposts. And a good example of this is a marketplace that I've seen built in the CTV space. So CTV can allow us to reach those hard to reach audiences, those niche audiences, those diverse communities. But actually CTV content isn't very well categorized. So an example of a well signposted marketplace takes CTV content and categorizes it. It makes it easy for you to find the exact niche that you're looking for. And because the content is a proxy for the audience, it makes it easier for you to find those audiences that allow you to reach diverse communities. Let's talk about control. So I think this is a really, really important one. As an advertiser, you need to know exactly what you're buying and exactly how much you're spending on it. You need to be able to understand from your budget how much of that went as media cost and how much of it was taken by the marketplace as a fee. And sometimes answering those two very, very basic questions, what am I buying and how much is it costing me and how much is being taken out of my budget as a fee, they can be really hard to answer. And I think that's a problem. I think if you're sat here today and you can't answer those simple questions, then you've really got a problem. So what we need is a well-lit marketplace. We need a marketplace that offers transparency where you can understand exactly what you're buying, exactly how much of that is media that's working for you and how much of it is fee that's being taken from you. So we need to turn on the light. We need to operate in these well-lit marketplaces. And as buyers, you need to be insisting on that. And if you're not getting it, like I said, build it yourself. Let's talk about choice. I think the idea here is different DSPs have different benefits. So rather than just using one DSP, buyers are starting to turn to a multi-DSP strategy. Often you want to work with a walled garden, and that makes sense because there's some benefits there. But then you also want to operate on the open internet, so you want to use a different DSP. The problem with choice is it can also mean fragmentation. It can mean more complexity. So every time you add a new DSP, you get the benefits of working with that new DSP, but you also get the additional complexity that it creates through fragmentation. And actually, again, I think marketplaces are a good solution to this problem. Because what you can have is a whole bunch of DSPs all pointed to the same marketplace. So let's take a really simple question again. How much did I spend on a particular publisher last month? Well, if you're working with three or four different DSPs, that can be a challenge to work out because you have to go to three or four different places and pull different reports and then stitch them together. But if you point all of these DSPs to the same marketplace, then you can pull that report in one place. You can report at the marketplace level and understand what your total spend looks like. So what you can do there is take the concept of a marketplace and use it to solve for the, the additional complexity that arises with working with more and more DSPs. Privacy is a really hot topic at the moment. And I think it's fair to say what's happened is privacy is fragmented. So before, we had the, the third-party cookie, and it was ubiquitous. It was everywhere. Third-party data was the way we bought advertising. But now that's fragmented into hundreds, maybe even thousands of different pieces. And we're back to the same problem, that with this fragmentation comes complexity. And we need a way of dealing with that complexity. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's loads of contextual solutions, and more and more are popping up each day, especially as we see uh, advancements in things like AI. But that means you're now going to have to work with lots of different contextual solutions. Industry IDs, I think there might be upwards of 100 different industry IDs, all with different use cases, all solving different challenges. We've got first-party data, and we heard about first-party data in the previous panels. The thing about first-party data is each publisher has their own data set. So that means you now have to go and speak to each individual publisher, and that creates further fragmentation. And then we've got what I've bucketed together as big data. So by that, I mean things like modeled solutions, things that are going on in the browser, so Flocks and Fledge and Parakeet, 
all of these other kind of browser-based solutions. The point is, there's a lot going on, and this creates a lot of fragmentation, and it creates a lot of complexity. Can marketplaces help you solve that and make it easier? Well, maybe, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Instead, what, I, what I'm sort of trying to work towards is, I think it makes sense to take all of this complexity and all of this fragmentation and move it away from the trader and move it into the marketplace instead. The worst thing you can do is to take this fragmentation, take this complexity, and dump it on the trader so that it's all being managed in the trader's head. Because the problem with that is the traders then not gonna have the headspace to do what you need them to be doing, which is optimizing your campaigns to maximize return on investment. Instead, what you can do is take all of this complexity and work it into your marketplace. You can centralize the identity decisions that you're making. You can build a center of excellence and all of those rules, all of those decisions, rather than being controlled by the trader at the DSP level, are controlled at the marketplace level. And that frees up the trader's time to do what they're supposed to be doing, which is maximizing your return on investment. Okay, so I wanted to summarize in, in what's been said. The first thing I think you need to do is think through your goals. So what are the challenges that you're working towards? What are you trying to solve? And I think the things Curran outlined, well, they're a really good place to start. So what is it that you're trying to solve? The next thing you need to do is find the right partner to work with. You need a partner that is able to help you realize your multi-marketplace strategy and you need a partner that is able to help you build your own marketplace. Because there are gonna be times where you can't find that marketplace that's fine-tuned to your exact trading needs. In those environments, you need to build your own marketplace, and then finally, start building. But actually, I'm not sure building is the right word, because building sort of sounds like you need to worry about publisher integrations. It sounds like you need to be able to code. It sounds like you need to be able to understand how something like pre-bid works, how open RTB works. Actually, maybe the right word is crafting, because really, the solution to a lot of these problems that we've discussed, these challenges that we've discussed are rule sets. You need the ability to take your business rules and build them somewhere. So the argument here, or the idea here is, take those rules and work them into your marketplace so that you can define the inventory, you can define the rules before that reaches the DSP. I think what's really important is you start doing this today because that's exactly what's happening in the market. The, the smart money, the, the forward thinkers, they're already crafting their marketplaces and by doing this, they're able to create that competitive advantage. Thank you for listening. Thank you both for that very interesting presentation. Uh, really enjoyed it, and um, looking forward to delving into some of the um, notes that you touched on in a little bit more detail. So, opening up the Q and A with um, sort of touching on the last point you mentioned, Harvin. It sounds very complicated. This notion of you know resetting the marketplace um, and um, resetting how buying takes place. But what is the reality of actually building, or as you said, crafting? A marketplace what does it actually involve yeah that's a, a really good question so absolutely it doesn't have to be difficult I think the difficult part is thinking through what the challenges you're trying to solve and what are the rule sets that you need to solve those challenges but then actually the technology exists today where you can log into a UI and you can build those rules and you can work you know just build deals and push those into the DSP so it doesn't really need to be challenging I think the hard part is finding the partner to do this with, understanding the challenges that you're trying to solve, and thinking through what the rule sets are. Do you, do you agree? Do you think that? Yeah, I think so. I just think the, the kind of core concept around it is just start doing it. Uh, and I think that's true of whether we're looking at kind of the future of identity or solving some of these challenges. I think from, from my perspective, there's a lot of waiting and seeing what's next and seeing when the next announcement comes for certain things and stuff. And I think within these marketplaces and the core challenges around kind of setting what your goals are, what you want to achieve, which challenges are more important for you as a business to solve than others, 
and start there and find the right partner and say, I want to test now. So that actually we're way ahead of where our comp competitors are in, you know, if we talk around two years time when the deprecation of the third party cookie finally comes in and, and all those kind of elements. So for me, it's just, and especially when we talk about it in the context of like things like diversified audiences, again, the key thing here is get it off your, your plan in terms, or your media plan or your strategy and get it at the forefront of what you're doing, what you're testing, get the learnings and start doing it. So I don't think that's much different to the concept of marketplaces. It's find the right partner, set the right goals and, and get going really. Yeah, I think the mistake is to leave it up to the DSP to decide. You, know, you, 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 you want to be able to program these decisions and you don't want to just leave it to chance that the DSP will end up buying from the correct marketplace. And where does curation fit in here? How does curation, um, or how can it help buyers to achieve you know, success across these four areas that you outlined? Uh, as, a, as a great example, straight off the bat, when we talk about kind of reach, and we're having this discussion with, with Lindsay and, and um, Serha at OMD Unite, and the discussion was around kind of how do we actually start doing it, and, and how does the tech support support reaching more diverse and, and inclusive audiences. And what was clear is that within reaching those audiences, the amount of fragmentation is, is there, right? And, and by being able to curate it and curate the relevant supply, we can make that buying really easy. So as a start for 10 in terms of tech supporting reaching diverse audiences, for example, that is a great starting point where the tech already exists and curation can really support that. So, so for me, just on the reach element, I think that's that's obvious, I don't know. You know, I, I agree. I think the key thing is we're, we're moving to so much more fragmentation. You know, every, everything we talked about, we need to find more diverse audiences. We need to work with more devices. We've got to work with more identity solutions. So you know, the Marilyn Monroe quote was good because it's about bringing things together. It's about bringing this diversity back together. And I think curated marketplaces allow you to do that. They allow you to kind of navigate this complexity and, and find exactly what you're looking for and push that into the DSP. And are, are we seeing examples of this happening already or do you think it's something that's still in, very, in the very early stages? No, I, I think we're, we're definitely seeing examples of this happening today. And I think it's, I call it the smart money, it's the, the forward-looking brands, the forward-looking agencies. Even publishers are getting in on the act as well. So we're seeing publishers start to build their own curated marketplaces. I think this is going to be a really key theme of, of next year as we, as we go forward. Um, but no, we're, we're seeing marketplaces being stood up today, definitely. And um, I think thinking a bit more broadly, you know, transparency is a, a massive uh, issue across the industry. Um, it's been touched on earlier today in, in earlier panels. Um, how do you think that uh, these marketplaces will improve transparency and accountability and how, how do we ensure that they stay transparent in and of themselves? Yeah, uh, I think one of the big problems that we've faced up until now is it's been hard to know exactly what you're buying. It's been hard to know what the fees are. And, and what's coming out now is that some marketplaces actually have really high fees and they might not necessarily be providing the value in exchange for that. So I think now that the tools are there, buyers can start to insist on transparency. They can start to insist to be able to understand, I want to know what am I spending, what is coming as a fee that's basically being taken out of my budget and what is going as media cost. And I think that's really important for, because as a buyer, you're funding the open internet. And that's something I, I really truly believe in. So if you're funding the open internet, you're keeping publishers, you know, it's the lifeblood of, of publishers, well, then it's important that you understand which publishers are receiving those budgets and how much of your budget they're receiving. And I think by working in a transparent marketplace that allows you to understand those data points, it's going to help you structure your business and optimize your business. I think the, the other thing that we touched on in the presentation was around what you can do with that transparency. Because I think that's the core bit. Knowing is all well and good, but actually then taking that one step further and using that to make business decisions around who you work with and how that helps you differentiate yourself as a business. A lot of the, the load at the moment is on the creative to help you differentiate because it's a lot of the same data sets, the same media assets, etc. By knowing what's in, knowing what's adding value, what's not adding value, what's right for your individual business and what's not right, it might, won't work for someone else, you can make those choices and you can continually 
create differentiation, competitive advantage through that and through that concept of the marketplace that you've built from scratch. So you know that everything that's going in your marketplace is a, is a conscious choice that you've made and, and is adding value to your, to your business day to day. And, that, and that's key. And I think the, the key point that you touched on there was around how do we keep it transparent and open? And that's, that's the key thing. I think as an industry, we have to make sure that this is something we continually demand and not just receive it and say that that's fine, that's where it's at, is make sure that kind of we're setting a much higher standard in terms of what transparency means and looks like. Okay. So uh, f final question for you guys is, um, what are the next steps to achieving um, wider diversity, you know, better representation of minority communities and also you know, better uh, exposure for minority-owned publications? Where do we go next to achieve that? Good question. I think um, for me, it's, like I said, it's a question that advertisers have been asking all the time. It still very much seems to be we have our core kind of media buying strategy and then we want to we want to reach diverse audiences. I don't think it can be the add on to your plan. I think it needs to form the crux of your plan it needs to be the heart of what you want to do, because that is how you'll achieve sincerity in it, which is key, the key thing there. You can't do it as a as a as a fad or a trend. It needs to be core to what you want to do as a business. You want to engage sincerely uh, and in a genuine way with these consumers. So for me, putting it at the forefront of what you're doing as a business, at the core of your plan, and then taking that to your agency or your tech partners and saying, this is what I want to achieve, means that they'll have to explore the solutions that can help you achieve that, make buying easy for it, make it efficient, find out what works, what doesn't. Um, so for me, that's very much the, the first step. It's not the can we also do this? It's this is what we want to do and this is core to what we, we need to achieve next year. And then I think it goes to building those signposts. So it's how do you find these, these, these pockets of inventory that are going to speak to diverse and inclusive audiences? So it's, it's, it's actually using the technology to signpost that inventory, which then means the trader doesn't have to worry about the complexity and the fragmentation. They know exactly what they need to do to target those audiences. Brilliant. Okay. Um, I mean, there's so much more we could go into, um, and um, Harvin and uh, Karen will be upstairs, so please do feel free to meet them uh, during the breaks, but we'll leave it there for now. So thank you so much for the presentation and the Q&A. Uh, give it up for Harvin and Karen. Thank you. Thank you.